Given the choice, what would you opt for? Heading out onto the trails or sticking to the asphalt on the road? I mean, with the road, you've got that convenience, the fact that you know exactly what you're gonna get. It's a flat, smooth surface made up of asphalt or tarmac. And also, it's pretty handy because most of us live rather close to a road. Yes, of course there are pros to road running, but what about running off-road? I'm going to be sharing the benefits of trail running and explaining how to get the most out of this varied terrain. As you can see, I have ventured into the countryside. It's time to talk about the benefits of running off road. But before we go any further, I just want to explain what trail running actually encompasses because a lot of people fear it means tackling technical rocky terrain in the mountains or maybe going through mud and bogs somewhere miles away from civilization. In actual fact, it just means heading off the road. So whether that is starting off by just venturing onto a grassy verge next to the road or maybe tackling a gravel canal towpath, it all counts. So you're probably wondering why I'm such an advocate for running off road. Well, let me explain. There's no getting away from the fact that running is a weight bearing sport. In actual fact, you're putting around two to three times your body weight through each leg on every single stride. And running on the road or the pavement is a rather unforgiving surface. So if you venture off-road, it's just going to give your body a little bit of a breather by taking that impact down just a slight notch, depending on what surface you opt for. And that then in the long term can actually reduce the chance of potentially picking up any injuries. For many of us, exercise is that perfect way to escape. It's an hour or so of time to yourself and just leaving those worries behind. Well, add in trail running and that takes it up another level because no matter how easy your trail is, you're still gonna have to be concentrating on where you're putting your feet and it'll help you to stay in the now. So that could be simply running through the trails of a field, along forest trails, over rocks, along a river, anything that's just gonna be stimulating your mind and helping you to remember just being in that moment. And I find it's a perfect way to just escape and enjoy yourself. The age of the smartwatch is here and they are great at collecting and storing our data, but it can be a slippery slope as you start to get obsessed with those numbers and forget to enjoy the simplicity of just running. You could be worrying about what your heart rate's doing, what pace you're at, what speed your last kilometer was compared to the next one. But the thing is with trail running, you can't really compare that data anyway because there's so many other variables. So it's a perfect way to be able to escape from the numbers. And I'm not saying there's no place for numbers. Yes, some runs you do want to have those metrics that you can hit those set times or those set targets but why not go out in the trails and just escape from that for a little while. Like we said earlier, running off-road doesn't have to involve going up and down mountains, but hills can be your friend. And obviously it does depend a little bit on where you live, but you'll usually find that hills off-road tend to be a little bit more taxing or steeper than hills on the road. So you can use them to your advantage to help spice up your training. And when you're running uphill, for example, you can concentrate on your having really good posture, your arm position, your arm drive, and also your foot placement. And vice versa, when you're running downhill, you can use that to help actually improve your running cadence and speed up your feet. Our final one here, running off-road, acts as a sort of natural core and balance session because you're constantly having to adapt to where your foot is landing, whether you're stepping over tree roots or puddles or maybe you're dodging rocks on the ground. You'll find yourself leaping or hopping, jumping, and that will naturally engage all of your core muscles as well as those proprioceptive muscles, which sometimes can get forgotten about on the road. So those tendons, ligaments, and muscles around all of your joints, which will actually help with your overall running efficiency. So yeah, I think there's a few bonuses there.
I'm leaving the mud behind me, it's back to the road. Now there's certain fundamentals when it comes to running training that just require you to have that flat, smooth surface. I'm gonna be explaining just why sometimes you need to run on this surface. First up, we've got the consistency of the surface of the road. You know exactly what you're getting. And when it comes to those tough sessions that you want to be able to repeat, well, it comes in rather handy. I mean, yes, you've got the option of a canal, for example, with hard packed gravel, but if it rains really heavily, you'll suddenly find yourself dodging puddles and mud, which will get in the way of your session. Repeatability leads directly on from consistency because thanks to the fact that the surface is consistent, you know you can do that same session week after week, session in, session out, and you get then a nice bank of data which you can rely back on to compare to other sessions. And there's just something more specific about it if you've got to do a high intensity session that you know you're gonna get the exact same results which you don't quite have when you're running on the trails. element of risk when it comes to running on trails of maybe a sprained ankle or tripping over something if you're running through mud or long grass or over uneven terrain and road just takes that out of it and even in the winter where maybe the trails become icy you'll find that the majority of main roads or sidewalks will at least be clear from any ice and snow and you've got the added bonus of street lights yes i know head torches can do a fairly good job but with a street light you know you've got that consistency you can run hard without having to worry about your footing This final point could sway you either way. Now, if you've entered an event, the surface that's going to be on is going to influence the type of running you're going to do in your training. Now, having said that, just because you've, say, entered a trail race doesn't mean all of your training needs to be on trail and vice versa. You do, however, just need to make sure that your mind and your body are prepared for that event that's coming up. That said, if you've got a half or a full marathon or a lot of running on the road, then you're going to need to make sure that you've had plenty of conditioning on this hard surface because your body is going to have to take several hours of pounding on that hard surface. As you can see, there are benefits to both types of running. Personally, for me, I love the trails in the summer when it's like this, but when it starts getting a little bit muddy, I know the roads are still there. And if you do have the option, I would recommend mixing it up with both and using the trails for those leisurely, longer, steady runs. And when you've got to do something more specific, then hit the road for that consistency on those high-end sessions. Well, do let me know which you prefer and why. You can do that in the comments section below and give us a like and remember, you can check out our social media channels and follow GTN there too.